Hi, I'm Ai and I work at the Hiroshima International Center. <laughs> Let me do that one. <laughs> Hey, my name is Aya and I'm originally, well, I was born in Tokyo actually, but then I grew up in California, San Francisco Bay Area, um, and I moved to Hiroshima about a year and a half ago. Uh, my mom actually, she's American, um, back in the day after college, came to Japan through the JET program and was probably one of the first ALTs like back in the 80s. Um, so I had had the JET program in my consciousness for a long time is like a possibility. So I applied and here I am. So I'm so excited about that. Um, so I'm a coordinator for international relations um, at the Hiroshima Prefectural Government, but then I also work at the Hiroshima International Center about twice a week. Um, so really varying what I do. Like people ask me and I'm like, I don't really know what to tell you. I'm still figuring it out myself. Um, but translating a lot of government related documents, um, interpreting for different things. Thankfully, the governor's English is really good, so I don't have to interpret for him because I was really nervous about that. So only the vice governor occasionally, but I feel like that's a little, no offense to the vice governor, but that's a little bit, that's a little bit easier, a little less nerve wracking. I also interpret here for the uh, foreign consultation service that we have and do different exchange events and stuff, even do some like English teaching sometimes. Um, a really wide range, essentially. Yes, this too. So yeah, a really wide range. That's a very good point. Do you guys know what JET stands for? I should. Japan English Teaching Program, which actually Andrew kindly researched for me because I did not remember. Um, so primarily I think people hear about the JET program through a lot of ALTs, um, assistant language teachers who come from English speaking countries to teach English or assist in teaching English to um, different local Japanese students. Um, and then also there's like a smaller group, the CARs or coordinators for international relations. It's a handful, a mouthful, um, but I'm one of them. And essentially it really varies because we're placed in different um, government organizations throughout Japan and it really varies based on what they want us to do. Um, so we're supposed to serve as, I guess, a bridge between our home country and Japan. Um, and we talk technically have, I guess, higher Japanese language skills. Um, ALTs aren't required to know any Japanese when they come. Um, so, you know, that could be interpreting or translating or helping hold international exchange events or different things like that. So, um, yeah, all of the above. I've even taught American recipe cooking classes and they'll just be really random requests that come in, but that's what makes it really fun. I write an article for the HIC newsletter, so maybe once about every three months um, on any topic that I choose called Hello Hiroshima is the name of the column. Um, but it's really fun because they give me full freedom basically in what I want to write about. Um, there's really no oversight at all, pretty much just whatever you'd like, um, which I really enjoy. So basically um, just a page every three months and how I choose, I guess I think of who's reading it. So a lot of the readers I think are either Japanese folks within Hiroshima who are interested in foreign cultures or um, foreign residents within Hiroshima, um, like a lot of international students read it. So um, I try and write on either my experiences as a foreigner living in Japan and Hiroshima um, as a way for maybe Japanese residents to learn about what that might be like and then also maybe for international residents to feel some maybe commonality or um, something like that through my story. So yeah, that's generally what I try and focus on. 
I think one of my favorite articles that I wrote or one of the topics was when I had moved here and was just kind of settling in and really getting a feel for what the city was like and really feeling like a member of the community because I remember that was such a happy time for me, I guess. Um, so I wrote a lot about the personal little connections that I had made in the city that really made it feel more like home. Like, um, you know, there's one local Okonomiyaki place that I would always go to and so the owner would recognize me now and he'd always like honk his horn whenever he drove past on the street or I'm like, hey, Laya, you know, or like, you know, I would walk past my local hair salon that I always go to and the owner actually ran out one time with an umbrella when it was raining because he saw me and I didn't have one. He was like, here, take it home or, you know, just like really little things like that. Um, those were just really good memories for me. So it was fun to write that article. I will help interpret if there's any English interpretation that is needed. Um, so that could be, you know, visa status related or different legal issues, or we also have um, that program specifically for international students who are looking for work within Hiroshima Prefecture. And that's definitely really increased because of COVID. You know, a lot of people don't want to go home or they're unable to. Um, so we'll actually meet with the same student maybe every week or every two weeks for however long it takes for them to find a job. So um, you get to know people pretty well, actually, uh, if it's like two or three months. Um, so that's definitely really fun. One of my favorite things actually is the international exchange students. We will hold different events for them. Um, so that could be, you know, different experiences with Japanese culture, like let's do mochi making or let's go try and harvest rice together or things like that. And then I'll get to go as an interpreter. Um, but it barely feels like work for me because I'm also technically a foreigner living here. And so a lot of the times I haven't actually experienced whatever it is either. Um, so I'll be there interpreting but also getting to participate with everyone and so that's really really fun. I love that. Please apply. Please do it. It's really great. Um, yeah, so I guess there is a certain level of Japanese proficiency that you do need going in. Um, but other than that, you can actually apply for the JET program as a whole for a CAR and then check a box and say if I don't become a CAR, I'm also open to being an English teacher, so an ALT, which is a pretty cool option. Um, definitely for being an ALT, you're not required to have a particular level of Japanese proficiency or even know any particularly coming in, um, which I think is really cool because it opens up the opportunity to really pretty much anybody. Um, definitely to be a CAR, they do require a certain level of Japanese proficiency, so like in the interview they will ask you questions in Japanese and stuff like that, so I think um, taking the JLPT and probably having at least an N2 level or N1 would be recommended. Um, I had N2 when I applied and I made it. So N2 is totally doable. Um, and yeah, I guess just really have an interest in, you know, living abroad and in Japan specifically and an international exchange, you know. Um, because there is a large part of this job that does require like Japanese skill, at least in my position, my workplace, like translation and stuff like that or interpretation, but also there's so much engaging with the local community and being a part of exchange events and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, if that sounds really appealing to you, then definitely we'd love to have you. So please apply. It doesn't happen all the time, but definitely I've heard of it for sure. Um, I think even in particular prefectures, the, uh I guess organizations there like hiring someone they already know. So they'll actually hire from the ALT pool um, to find their CAR. So like definitely there are specific prefectures that do that a lot and it's totally an option. So I know people too who they really wanted to come to Japan and maybe eventually be a CAR, but they don't have the level quite yet um, language wise. So they'll come as an ALT and then study and then become a CAR. So that's definitely an option too. I like so many different things that people are like, what do you like to do? And I'm like, ah, um, I definitely really love traveling, which unfortunately is not super possible at the moment, but I did go to Taiwan for the first time right before the pandemic really started. That was really neat, loved that. 
Um, I really enjoy actually hiking and camping. So I've done some of that since coming to Japan too. And that's been really fun. Um, love that. I really like working out in general actually. So if you go to Anytime Fitness, in Hiroshima, you'll probably see me there, so say hello. There should be another video on this channel with further information about the Hiroshima International Center if you're curious about coming and checking us out or just learning more about what we do, so please check that out. And then also um, another resource would be the Hiroshima International Center website. So usually we would have upcoming events and stuff on there. Unfortunately right now we have a lot less because of Corona, but we do plan to, once things calm down again, have more. So please check out yeah our website as well but yeah please please come check out the center we'd love to see you and if it's a Tuesday or a Thursday I will be here so please say hello